Look what I have created! I have made fire! <laughs> I'm going down! Oh no, there's the bike! Oh, duck and run! Oh! <laughs> That's for sure a kill switch violation! Always check your kill switch! Today we're gonna talk about the early days. I was at the Maley Ranch and Dove Farrell came for a weekend. And I was sitting my butt on the seat all the time and he took that seat off. He taught me how to ride Speedway. If you wanna learn how to ride Speedway, you gotta have the pros teach you because you don't know these tips unless you're taught. So learn from the best if you wanna be a good Speedway rider. Oh shit. I am the great Gordon Horio. I need TV for my bug Horio. And that's what happened. Dangerous Dub, he taught me all these things and I absorbed them like a sponge. Wayne's World, Wayne's World, Wayne's World. All the things that Dangerous Dub taught me, I'd have to take them out and practice. There was only one practice track in the area and that was Lake Elsinore Speedway. And that was a raceway over in Lake Elsinore and it was the off season. So I had the whole off season to practice. About that time, I met Jerry Fairchild and he said, I wanna make your JAP fast. And I said, Jerry, go ahead and make it. So he took all the engine off and he did all his magic on my speedway bike and he made it fast. Every Saturday I was out at Lake Elsinore, the raceway, the speedway, and I remembered and I practiced everything that Dangerous Dub taught me. week I felt myself getting better and better I could really feel it practicing I'd get to race some of these riders these D2 riders and it was getting better and better and I was riding faster and faster and I was smoother and smoother with a more practice practice makes perfect or practice makes good groovy baby practicing racing during the off season. And one of those racers was Scott Reed. Got a chance to race with him. Got a chance to watch him fall down. It was great for quick reflexes because in the racetrack, you never know when an emergency will happen, right? Oh my, where am I going? Oh no, oh no, move, move, okay. I packed my bicycle with my sleeping bag and I rode my bicycle to Mexico for a training mission all the way to Mexico in one day. Rode from Orange County to Mexico. It was quite the day and I was training and I stopped in San Diego on the way back and I stopped at James Bruner's uh, house and he was a track photographer. I had met James at the San Diego Ote Mesa Speedway and they had a practice there. They had a practice, it was a D1, low D1, D2 practice track. And I was there in the practice and I was pretty much tearing it up. I took all those things that Dangerous Dub taught me, all that practice at Lake Elsinore, and I applied it. <music> Opening day came and I went there proudly to see my name on the program. I knew I would be a star writer there from my practice session. Everybody noticed me, right? Then I opened the program and my name wasn't on the program. I was stunned, I was shocked. I was like, what? I went to the promoter and I said, why isn't my name here? I was one of the top writers. And he said, I don't know. Oh, remember what you did. Maybe Larry Costa's dad made that program from Advanced Blueprint. <laughs> Left me off that program on purpose. Who knows? I went to the promoter and he said, well, we don't have any spot for you. You have to go home. And I live like two hours away, long hours, far. And I said, no, I'm not gonna go home. I'm gonna race. And he said, well, you're third reserve. You'll never make it. And I said, I'm staying here and I'm gonna race. I'm gonna race no matter what. I don't care. I was very upset. I was very angry. I'll be back. 
at the sign up booth, I noticed this big, beautiful silver cup. It was gorgeous. And, it, and I asked, what's this cup? And they said, it's for the winner of the match race championship at the end of the season. Hmm, I like that cup. I like it. Come on, that's mine. I want that. So this is going to be here every week until the end of the season. And I said, oh, I like that one. And I said, if I get on the program, I'm going to win that cup. Do or do not. There is no try. Success came. And Denny Scopoletti, the speedway rider, was racing in another venue. And he left a spot for me. Thank you, Denny. I was able to get on and race the handicap program. I was so mad. I was so mad. My name is Robocop. I'm here to terminate you. I was so mad I went out there and I just blew the handicap portion of the speedway away. I won that main event. Why? They didn't put me on the scratch program because they didn't think I was good enough to make the program. I was good enough to make that program. And I won that main event. I said, they're gonna never leave me off this program again. Never. And also, they're gonna put me in the scratch portion of the program also. Great, Scott. Oh. A long week, I was on the program. I was on the scratch part of the program. I better have been. And this guy named Kevin McDonald, he was from New Zealand. He won the first King of the Hill match race Second honors. Second week, they put me on the scratch part of the program. I won that scratch main event. I made sure that these people were gonna notice me from now on. I was mad. And the following week, the third week, they put me on the program to race the King of the Hill match race against Kevin McDonald from New Zealand, the famous Kevin McDonald. And I went ahead and I beat him. I beat him and I was the new crowning King of the Hill. All right, you're on top. Where do we go from now? People were shocked. This guy that didn't even make the program was now king of the hill. I had won some scratch, main events, handicap, and they started to take a notice of the bumblebee. Ooh. Famous Larry Costa. He was one of my arch rivals in that match race championship. I would win a couple, he would win one. We'd go back and forth. It was really great. And Larry, later on, he raced in the British League. He was on the Aces. He was an excellent rider. But Larry and I, in our early days, we had it out. was the new kid in town in San Diego and I made sure that everyone knew who I was and it was a lot of fun. We had a good time. It was kind of weird because of last year I was nobody. I didn't even know how to ride a speedway bike. Didn't know anything about speedway. And now I'm one of the leading point getters at this D2 going to D1 track. Jerry Fairchild, the famous Jerry Fairchild, was my sponsor. And he said, Brian, quit winning those races at that D1, D2 track. Come with the big boys over in Bakersfield. And they had the team racing at that time. Dangerous Dub Farrell was his rider. And Jerry Fairchild and Ida, his wife, they invited me in the back of their big old maroon pickup truck with all speedway bikes. They loaded my bike too. And we drove up for a few nights at Bakersfield. And the first night I went up there, it was a very hard, slick track, I like that. I won the handicap main event in D1. And everyone was like, who is this guy? I had gone back to San Diego because I was tired of Bakersfield. That drive sucked. I went down to San Diego. It was fun down in San Diego. It was a fun place. I went down there and guess what? There was a new kid in town by that time. His name was Rad Brad Oxley. Rad Brad was a good young rider. He was a young guy. He was real skinny, real little, and 
It was just, but he was a good writer. He had all that backing with Harry, and then his tuner was George Wynn. It was always by his side. Rest in peace, George Wynn. And Brad was the new king of the hill. And I had to race Brad. I think we had a few battles, and I had some success against Brad. And the end of the year came, and it was the top three riders. Me in second place, Larry Costa was in third place in points, and Rad Brad, he was the leader. He was sitting on top as the point leading getter for the match race championship, the king of the hill. And I had to race Larry Costa for the chance to race Brad, and we had the best out of three races. And luckily for me, I was able to take Larry Costa down two of those races, and I was able to advance to meet Brad in the final. I could think of that night was that cup, that beautiful silver cup, and also the beginning, the start of the season when they didn't even put me on the program, I was third reserve. I was mad and I continued my anger all the way to that final championship event, and I was thinking, that cup is mine. Final was said, it was Rad Brad Oxley, the famous future two time United States champion and British League writer. <laughs> against the Bumblebee as second place rider there, the second place in points. And we had the best two out of three. And they called me up to the announcer's booth. It was up in the stands for an interview. I was up in the stands in that interview and the announcer said, so Brian, what are your chances of winning this race, winning this cup? And I said, that cup is mine. I'm gonna win that cup. And he said, well, Brad, Brad has been leading the points. And how are you going to beat Brad? And I said, I don't care. I'm going to win that cup. That cup is mine. I'm going to take Brad down. And I was thinking to myself later, like, why did you talk that way? I could see Harry Oxley and George Wynn just fuming. Brad was probably like, oh, my God, what a kind of guy. It was like the WWF. Stage was set. It was Brad and my first chance of winning a championship. I was looking at that big, beautiful silver cup. It was gorgeous all year long at the sign-up booth. I was like, I gotta have that. I gotta have that. Now it's just between me and Brad. The stage was set. The best out of three, Brad Oxley and Brian Bumblebee for the championship. I don't exactly remember how it ended, but uh, we had the best out of three, and I believe we split one and one, and I won the third race for the championship. I won the championship. Was one of the best times of my life. I was so happy. I was talking. I was going to win that cup. I was thinking the whole year that cup is mine. And guess what? That cup was mine. From total disrespect being third reserve on the program to being the match race champion, it was an honor. It was a great experience and it was a memory I will never forget. My crew we just partied, we had a good time all the way home. We were hungry and we were in San Clemente area and we, there's a Denny's and we stopped at that Denny's. We pulled up and then there was Rad Brad Oxley's crew parked there and I'm like, oh gosh, we're gonna see Brad. And then we went in the Denny's and then they sat us right next to Brad Oxley and Harry Oxley and George Wynn, my group and then Brad's group were sitting next to each other. And I told my group, just be quiet, don't say anything. Cause I'm sure Brad was very upset about the loss of that cup. And we didn't say anything and, and Brad's group didn't say anything. We just ate our food and then we went home. This past September 24th, 2022, I was able to go out to Costa Mesa Speedway and race. I'm not as good as I was back in those days of the cup, but it was a lot of fun. And Brad Oxley, to this day, he reminds me, Brian, you won my first championship. You took it away at the Ote Mesa in San Diego. And we just laugh and chuckle. Brad and I are good friends to this day. And we laugh about that time, about those times, about the memories of our early days. It was a great time. And you know what? It built a lot of confidence in me. I was like, you know, I can go out and I can do more. And so we went ahead and we did more. We're gonna talk about that next time in episode three. We went ahead and took that confidence of winning that cup, that beautiful silver cup, 
and we did some more damage in the future. <laughs>